was up? Did you miss me? Einstein was an idiot. Say what? To call Einstein uh, the greatest mind that ever lived is laughable. But why? Because God said that the wisest man who ever lived was King Solomon. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in my continuing mission to expose assholes worldwide and teach you physics by demonstrating it on stupid people, today's subject is Gorilla 199. The living proof of the neurological singularity. When IQ goes to zero, insane stupidity goes to infinity. So, teabag eyes just said, Einstein was an idiot. But as if that's not enough. He was also a Freemason. Which apparently is the same thing. And of course, he was also a scientist. Which, believe it or not, is the same thing again. Now, being the lowest common denominator of idiots worldwide, one would think Gorilla would have some sort of appreciation to these little fuckers. And Freemasons? How cool are they? I mean, besides the really weird dress code, they are shape shifting transdimensional reptilians, Illuminati, Bilderberg, capitalist, socialist, Jews that plan to take over the world by putting symbols on money. But for the most part, Gorilla seems to have a particular problem with scientists. Why? Well, for two reasons. First, scientists love to tell us lies. And second, and love to tell us things which are completely untrue. Which one would think are sort of the same thing. So, how did Einstein lie to us? Except for the lie derivative, which is not really a lie, you know. Well, apparently, Gorilla saw a video concerning Einstein and his theories, which he was kind enough to share with us. Contrary to what we learned at primary school the shortest distance between two points isn't necessarily a straight line now this is of course completely true when you move from cartesian coordinates to distorted curvy linear coordinates see speaking of distortions it is just said that the shortest distance between two points is not a straight line. Now, that is, of course, completely untrue. Because what the show really said was that the shortest distance between two points isn't necessarily a straight line. Which is not. Same thing. And thankfully, Vapor Brain is going to help me prove it. So, Monkey Brain is convinced that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line by the following reasoning. If it were not, aeroplanes would fly in zigzag lines to get to wherever it was that they were going. Well, it turns out that aeroplanes are the perfect example. Okay, so let's say you're here in New York, the capital of the United States, and you want to fly to Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. That was a political joke in case you didn't notice. So let's fly over the ocean, through Algeria, Tunisia, and finally Israel. Well, that's in a flat map but switch to globe view and the exact same line is completely off scale running over different states what the fuck well to those of you who read the bible and believe god it turns out that the world isn't flat and on a curved surface, the shortest distance between two points isn't necessarily a fucking straight line okay Next. Space is curved in the vicinity of matter, and the planets follow the shortest path on the curved surface of space. So massive objects bend space itself. Or the way Gorilla put it. Okay, so there's, there's, there's your grid, there's the planet, and it will curve like this once the planet is on it. That's completely ridiculous. Okay, so let's say we have no evidence at all that relativity is correct. Well, here's a nice indication that space just might be curved due to large masses. So most of you probably remember from high school Newton's equation, you know, F equals MA, which basically means that to reach the acceleration A of a body with mass M, you need to apply F amount of force. The second equation, which we use to calculate gravitational force, usually 
be for things falling onto things or for things orbiting other things, you know, like planets orbiting the sun, we say that the gravitational force acting on that little object equals to the mass of the big object times the mass of the little object times the gravitational constant divided by the distance or radius squared. Now notice that if I plug this F equation into the other F equation, something pretty weird is happening. The two little m's cancel each other out, which would suggest that the gravitational force has nothing to do with the mass of the little object. That's weird. So what sort of model would correspond to something like that? Well, first, let's take three-dimensional space x, y, and z and express it in one dimension we'll call s, which is basically just a function of x, y, and z. And let's say we have a big, nice mass like the sun curving space s. And the zombie planet Niribu is rushing along space towards our sun. So if Niribu comes too close to the dent, it will fall in following the curve. And now you can see how the motion of Niribu was not affected by its own mass, but actually only by the bigger mass causing curvature in the fucking space. Cool, huh? Rubbish. Really? Why? If this theory were correct, that would mean that the people who are at the north side of the Earth would be affected by gravity, but the people on the south side would be squashed by what the Earth is resting on. No way. No way anyone as stupid as you actually exists! Okay, let's get one thing straight, or rather curved. Space is three fucking dimensional, and space-time is actually four dimensional. And things aren't on it, they're fucking in it! How stupid can you be? Which is why in this diagram, planet Niribu falling into the little pit might end up doing this, like the rest of the fucking planets. Which brings me to my next point. And they say that this is a fact because this theory was made by this person who was so intelligent, you know. No, gorilla. They say it because it predicted data that was observed and confirmed. You know, like the pre-Hillian precession of planet Mercury, which until Einstein, nobody could explain its weird fucking motion. Or how about gravitational lensing, most beautifully shown in Einstein rings? usually happening due to the mass of a closer galaxy distorting the light coming from a galaxy behind it. Or how about objects in orbit that lose energy due to gravitational radiation or gravitational waves and thus gradually spiral in, which by the way cannot happen in a Newtonian universe. And this this is without even mentioning special relativity. Fucking dope! So, what I really hope is that you enjoyed learning physics by demonstrating it on stupid people. And I invite you all to send me similar videos when people say or do stupid things regarding physics. And so, like always, my beloved YouTube gang, peace, love, harmony. Have a good one, people. I really, really love you all. The smaller male gets off with just a warning, but next time, the dominant silverback may be less forgiving.